back. <laughs> yeah, let's try that again with a working microphone, maybe. Can you guys hear us now? Let us know in the chat. It's alive. I see levels this time, so I'm confident you're seeing us. Ah, so uh, I already showed you our streaming setup, um, even the parts that weren't working. So I think we should go, Miranda, I think we should go right into the large key. Awesome. you're talking about. And here we go. Okay, so as we know, all of our X keys come with the standard one keys like this. Um, but you can get bigger keys if you want. So we have our 2x2 two two key, and it takes up four regular keys. You can get a wide, and it will go against, on your X keys horizontally and take up two. Or you can do a tall and take up two vertically. So let's go ahead and swap out some keys here for, let's do a tall. And you just pull it out with your key puller there, put it right on there. And then say you want to program this in MacroWorks 3.1. What you do is come over to here, and so we put it in this bar right here. So you click on the first button, and you do Shift, and click on the other button that takes up the rest of the space for the large key. Right click, and do Apply Large Key. And so then it already knows the way you've clicked, selected your keys of which large key you want. And then you just double click on there and program it like, oops, program it like any other X key, uh, any other key that you would do. And so, where is my six is the one I want. There we go. So you have a couple different options in this window that you can program. You can do some text and just Start typing, do your password, do a, your signature, a chunk of... One of the cool things about the text option is it accepts Unicode. So if you're using special characters like symbols, degree symbols, or math symbols, or Chinese characters, uh, we can put those in as a text feature and they'll be pasted into whatever document you're working in. Right. And another option is keystrokes. So for one example, say you want, you know, a cut key, so Control X. You just uh, type it into the keyboard and it records it right there. That's probably one of the more common uses people have for it, just sending key macros, cut, copy, paste. That's really handy. Yeah. What else you got in there? We have shortcuts. So for this, you can do uh, you can do a shortcut so you can open it directly to say a random folder on your PC or... Yeah, I have this map to the network drives I have to get to all the time that are kind of a pain to have to click through, you know, six different levels to get to them. You right. can just assign them to a key. And then with your uh, directory folder, you can... Just pick the folder you want to open folder. and say OK. Uh, but the thing I wanted to dig into today is something most people don't ever see in MacroWorks, and that is the special functions. So on the functions tab, you get the show function, and we've got the F keys above F12, which are really handy if you're trying to do something that you don't want the keyboard to conflict with and you still want a piece of software to see a key. Many of them will see those higher function keys that other people don't have on the keyboards. Um, you can do different game controllers like your joystick or game buttons, uh, some layers, mouse movements. And another fun one, well, the multimedia is like play, uh, pause, next, that kind of stuff, yep. and, and for different programs. Um, but another fun one is this OS functions key where you can do, do things like launch your Windows calculator. The date timestamp is kind of one of my favorites because there's a lot of neat things you can do with that. If just it, it gets the exact date and time from your operating system and injects it into whatever you're working with. Right. So, for example, on my, my desktop setup, when I send my daily report, it, it grabs the date from the OS and puts it in the subject line so everybody knows and I can keep track of, of that date. Right. So... That's kind of a quick overview of large keys and MacroWorks 3.1. And uh, I was going to look here and see. Tommy says he loves MacroWorks. <laughs> I'm playing with Vnix Social so we can actually see that. 
We got it working this time. <laughs> uh, we got a question. Uh, we're gonna, if we do our usual five minute thing, we will close right now and come back and answer questions. So should we do that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, get that down and we'll see you in a minute. All right, and, and we're, we're back. back, and our mic is working still. <laughs> Yay. So easy to customize, yeah. Okay, let's see. So we had here question. What do you think? Will there be any are we updates? Update on the... I'm sure <laughs> there are. We're, I'm laughing. There are constant <laughs> updates to MacroWorks 3.1. Uh, we are always improving it, finding bugs. Uh, we get feature requests, and, and sometimes they make it in. Uh, Let's see what else we got here. On a private computer, can you store passwords commonly used? Yeah, you can absolutely, absolutely. store passwords. Um, just uh, as you know, Tommy, if somebody comes in and, and starts messing with your computer, they will have your passwords there. But if you don't let strangers into your house to use your computer <laughs> frequently, then it uh, doesn't seem to be an issue. We have another question here. Can you use large keys in hardware mode too? That's not software driven, correct? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, one uh, one thing we didn't mention that's kind of cool about the large keys is that you know they're pushing down multiple switches on our device, and so what our programmers have done is they watch all of the keys that are being pressed. And when they see the first one go down, they send off the macro and they wait until they see the last one come up before they send a release macro or, or do what they're supposed to do. So that's kind of a unique thing that we have in MacroWorks, a way of making, you know, treating that key like an actual large key and making it more reliable. <laughs> yeah, Tommy has no well, friends. I mean... <laughs> Let's see, do we have any other questions back here? Well, people telling us that we have no audio. Uh, yeah, that's the first time we've had that particular bug. Yeah. Um, we're yakking away, and I look over at the audio meter, and there's nothing happening. And then I tried to restart our microphone. and uh, Just when it, you it, think you have everything <laughs> everything going right, because we checked, it, checked everything right before we went live. So we rebooted the <laughs> VMix real quick and got back up and, and got to talk to you guys. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Anybody want to say hi? I thought I had friends watching, but <laughs> apparently Tommy's the only one that loves me. Um, here's an older one from a friend of ours. Thank you, Bill. Glad you're watching from uh -huh. St. John. Uh, everything else back here is all about uh, no sound. And, uh, yep, yep. Oh, here's something else. I'm going to put it up for any consideration installing a USB port so you can make use of a USB card. Uh, Thomas, that's a great question. Um, in order to do that, we would really have to make the X keys like a hub uh, so that it had more than one USB, you know, it'd be like you having more than one USB device plugged in. We are working on a custom design that's, I'm not sure when it's going to be released. So I don't want to say too much, but um, yeah, we are kind of working on a custom X keys keyboard that will have uh, what we call a mouse port. That's another issue with uh, like USB cord cards is that X keys really only needs low speed USB 1.0. We work on everything right. up through 3.0, but uh, since we're a low-speed device, if you plug a memory card or something else, camera or something like that, into an X keys, then what do we do? You know, do we do we make a 3.0 hub that goes in there even if we don't need it, uh, or we just keep plugging away at the speed that of a keyboard, which is all we need? So 
other than this big custom one, and I'm not even sure what's going to happen there. I think we're calling it a mouse port, so I think it's still a low a low speed port. Right. Um, I think our our answer for that is that if you want to do that, get a USB 3.0 hub and plug your X keys into it and other stuff along with it. Uh, let's see. Um, what's this one? Are those the only keys available? I'm so glad you asked that question. <laughs> uh, somewhere on here. Here's the input. Uh, if you go to our website and go to, thank you, products and accessories. It's a little hard to see on this low monitor, but I'm getting there. Yeah, because I clicked it on adapters to the accessories. There's accessories. Keys and legends. Yep. Come on, you can do it, little browser. <laughs> and then you got to keep going. One more layer. One more layer. <laughs> so here's kind of a, an overview, um, the different keycaps we offer and blockers and kits, like the video switcher kit that we have on the, on the one we're using right now. So if I dive a little bit deeper into keycaps, uh, look at all those fun colors you can get to pimp out your X keys. I hope that answered your question. Tommy <laughs> says, well, we've got to get his comment up here. Waiting for your next K1000. Okay, Tommy, I'll get to work on that one. <laughs> it's going to be a long keyboard. Let's see. Eight rows high. How wide do we have to make that? Oh, geez. Um, uh, I don't even know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm not a, an engineer or a mathematician. <laughs> I can't do that one in my head, Tommy. Sorry. So, hey, that was cool. We actually had questions and we had social working so yes. we could put them up. Um, and that's about it. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for asking questions and talking with us. <laughs> yep. Thanks a lot. And uh, you know where to find us if you have more questions we didn't get a chance to get to. Yeah. So, and bye, everybody. See you next see week. Next week. <laughs>